Hey guys, it's manager Kylie and in today's video I'm going to share with you how penalties in hockey work. So today I'm going to go through uh, penalties in hockey and kind of how they work, the different kinds of penalties, um, how penalties are called in the sport, and what the different infractions mean. There's lots of different penalties that can happen in hockey, so I thought it would be important to give a detailed video on the different penalties and what they entail depending on the severity of the penalty. But if you guys are interested in more sports administration content just like this, definitely the subscribe button, turn the bell to get notified every time I upload as I post a new video every single Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And we're gonna dive into the different penalties in hockey. So in hockey, you have a few different penalties. When penalties are called, the different types of penalties are based on the severity of the penalty. Um, so how um, major the penalty is in the sense of intent to injure. And then if somebody is to get hurt, that can change the um, severity of the penalty. Different penalties have different amounts of time that you spend in the penalty box and different um, repercussions, whether that could be as serious as being thrown out of a game or just a two minutes in the penalty box. But I'm gonna go through how penalties work and even touch a little bit on power plays and how that works when there are people in the penalty box. So the most common type of penalty that you're going to see is a minor penalty. Um, this is the least severe of them all and it is usually for two minutes in the box so this means you go and you sit in the box for two minutes for any penalty when you're sitting in the box that's a minor penalty um, if a goal is to score so the team that's on the power play is to score a goal you automatically come out of the box after that goal if it's a five minute penalty so a major penalty um, you actually stay in that box until your five minutes is up and then if it's a more severe penalty that you get kicked out um, that's a whole different case where you have less players for the rest of the game um, so it's important to understand that goals a lot of times on power plays can and end the penalty early, but generally you sit in the box for two minutes for a minor penalty. Occasionally you will also have double minor penalties, which is when the official decides um, it's not severe enough to be a major penalty, um, but it is still pretty severe, so you're gonna have it for four minutes. That's very rare, um, but sometimes you do have a in-between um, minor and major penalty. Some examples of minor penalties are cross-checking, tripping, um, slashing, obstruction, high sticking, uh, roughing, delay of game. Um, so a lot of these penalties are things that uh, somebody may fall to the ice and there may be some sort of confrontation, but a lot of times there's not a huge intent to injure and somebody's not gonna get hurt because of this. So the next thing you have is a major penalty and this is something a little bit more severe. The person sits in the box for five minutes no matter what. So the other team is on a power play for five full minutes and could score as many times as they want. This usually has a little bit more intent for injury. So some examples of this are checking from behind, fighting, um, being the instigator of a fight, leaving the bench during um, some sort of altercation or fight, um, kind of pushing your skate into um, an opponent or holding or grabbing at somebody's face mask. So these a little bit more have the chance of major injury. So that's why they re require a longer penalty penalty time. And then a lot of times, um, any minor penalty, so cross-checking, if there's obvious intent to injure a player, that will be treated as a major penalty and you will get the five minutes. So it might be a minor infraction in the sense of what it is seems like a minor infraction, but because of the intent to injure, it's treated as a major penalty. There are also misconduct penalties and these are treated a little differently. Um, so the player that causes the misconduct penalty, generally has to go to the box for 10 minutes. However, it's also treated as a minor penalty or a major penalty. So another one of your teammates will come sit in the box with you for whether that's two or five minutes. And then when they are released, so the power play is over, you have to just sit in the box um, for either another full 10 minutes after that, depending on league rules or the rest of the 10 minutes. Um, that would be after either the two or five minutes is up. And what that is, is it's really just keeping you off the ice um, for that time. When your 10 minutes is up though, you do have to wait for the next stoppage in play to be able to get out of the box, but it just keeps you off the ice. Um, if you have some sort of misconduct penalty, this may be swearing or yelling at a referee um, in like an aggressive tone or anything like that. So it really is just keeping you off the ice. Um, your other teammates going to serve like the traditional penalty time and be able to come back on the second the power play is over and the time runs out, um, but it's just keeping you off the ice to not cause any more infractions. 
And then there are match penalties. These are a little bit more major. This is when there is cause for ejection from the game. So misconduct's like the next biggest thing, um, but it doesn't cause ejection. Match penalties do cause ejection. So this means you do have to leave the game. So if you get some sort of match penalty, you're done for the day. You leave the ice, you go back to the locker room and you're done um, skating for that day. For this, again, similar to the misconduct penalty, one of your teammates is going to sit in the box and serve the time for the penalty. Uh, so whether that is two minutes, five minutes, whatever it is. Um, but this one generally has a clear intent for injury and really you're hurting somebody um, and you need to be removed from the ice. So your teammate will serve the penalty and come out when the power play is over, but you're done for the day, you're off the ice and you're back in the locker room, so you don't have the ability to skate anymore. In some rare cases, there may be penalty shots that are called, and this generally happens if one team has a clear breakaway and is going one-on-one -on -one with the goalie to the net, and somebody comes up from behind and intentionally does some sort of thing that is illegal, so whether that is tripping, cross-checking, anything to get them out of the way, just so that they can't score, and this may allow for a penalty shot, so the ref may decide that it is appropriate for having a penalty shot, which is another one-on-one -on -one opportunity with the goalie, but nobody's in the way. Um, so if for some reason somebody's on a cruel breakaway, you wanna make sure that you're going for the puck and not just like going for their body to get them for, to not be able to score. I know it can be scary when somebody's on a breakaway, but you have to make sure um, that you're going at them in an appropriate manner, because if for some reason you go at them and you're just going at them to stop them um, and not really going for the puck, you could end up with your um, goalie going one-on-one -on -one for a penalty shot. And then one thing you might see about penalties in hockey is most of them are delayed penalties. So what this is, is if the penalty happens, the ref's gonna put their arm up in the air and you're gonna notice that the penalty has occurred. However, if the team that is controlling the puck is the one that's going to end up on the power play and have that advantage, they're allowed to keep controlling the puck until the other team starts to control it. So whichever team caused the infraction, um, so say the blue team um, cross checks the red team, if the red team keeps carrying around the puck and is able to try to score and anything like that, that is perfectly fine. It's the blue team, once they get control of the puck, then the whistle's gonna be blown, the play is gonna be dead, and the person's gonna go to the box. So you are able to, if there's some sort of delay in the penalty, sometimes you'll actually even see the person that um, is receiving the next power play might pull their goalie quickly to put another player on the ice um, to try to get a score before that penalty is called. Sometimes too, depending on the severity of the penalty, if you are able to score during that delayed penalty time, they might end up calling off the penalty. So it's just another like version of a power play. It's getting you a little bit of an opportunity if you're still controlling the puck to continue your control before the penalty is called, where the penalty is an infraction against the other team and still is trying to give you an advantage. So that's the basics of penalties in hockey. If you have any questions about different penalties and whether they fall into major penalties, minor penalties, anything like that, definitely let me know in the comments down below. If you'd like to see a video like this for any other sport, let me know that as well. I do have one about football penalties, but if there's any other sport that you'd like to understand, penalties, cards, or anything like that, I'd be happy to share that information with you. But I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and I will see you guys next Wednesday.